it's your old pal, the Moo Cow here, a.k.a. Paul A. Presenza. And I am joined tonight by... Jonathan A. Moody. Yay! And we are here for yet an utter end of the month haul, where we talk about all the wacky Blu-rays and DVDs that we picked up during the month. So, welcome. Welcome to you two. Yay. So, I guess we will start off with Blu-rays. I got yep. 10 I got this 10 month. as well. So all you right, go well, first. Perfect. I'll go first. All right. I think it's 10. Now, just to sort of catch everybody up, in the past, I had restricted my Blu-ray purchases to really, really good movies, sort of your Criterion Watch movies or stuff that I would want on Film Freaks. And I was leaving kind of the crappy stinkers to just DVD. And then as time was going on and I was going to the dollar store and I was finding lots and lots of them on, on Blu-ray, I'm like, what the hell? I might as well go ahead and get some stinkers on Blu-ray too. So most of these are going to be stinkers, but I do have a few other ones that are actually good. Okay. And I'll start with those. So the first one is one of my favorite, favorite movies of all time. I can't say it's a great movie. It's a good movie. It's got a few flaws, but ever since I was a little kid, the Warlord, probably my favorite Charlton Heston film of all time. Oh, I've never seen it. Oh, it's a great, great film. It's a great medieval drama with Richard Boone and Rosemary Forsyth. And it's just absolutely Guy Stockwell and Neil McNinnis. And it's just Franklin Schaefer's the director. And but it's just, is it a potential uh, film freaks? Film freaks. It's definitely a film freak. So at some point, we will definitely check this out. And this has got some special features. It's got an audio commentary from film historian and critic Sergio Mims. So I'm very curious to see what that is. I've been kind of waiting for this to come out in Blu-ray for a good while. Awesome. So that's cool. The next are a couple of movies that I don't know much about, but they look like they could potentially be pretty good. Uh, the first one is actually George A. Romero, and it is Survival of the Dead, which I actually never saw. So, I've heard it's, I'm not sure which one I've... Like, because he did like Land of the Dead and then like Survival of the Dead and yeah, Diary. Land of the, of the Dead. Dead was the last one I saw. I never saw this. Okay. Is this the last one he did? I think so. And it's probably, I don't think, know that it's necessarily up to the rest of his films, but it is a George Romero. So I'm going to assume it's at least a has zombie the, movie. It's a right, potential to be pretty good. And then the next one, just from the cast alone, looks like it's potentially really, really good. It's called. Dark Was the Night, and this has got Marissa Tomei, Timothy Oliphant, Charlie Plummer, and Muriel Enns, and it's directed by Joshua Leonard. I'm not exactly sure I know who that is. Oh, but... Joshua Leonard directed it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's the director. He's the actor in Blair Witch. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, this looks like it could be potentially pretty good, so, and you know, I'm a big Marissa Tomei fan, and I'm also a big uh, Timothy Oliphant fan. So that has potential to be good. We'll see. The rest are going to be pretty much, I'm sure they're going to be stinkers. Uh, we got Hell Ride, which uh, Quentin Tarantino loves. Larry Bishop directed it. And it is a biker gone crazy movie. And it's got, oh gosh, uh, Michael Madsen in there and, Eric Balfour and Dennis Hopper's in there. Oh, and... God, Eric Balfour? Yes. I've seen him in forever. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I yep. used to be a huge fan of his. Um, uh, he's, uh, and then I watched, uh, I forgot which one it was. It was like a, oh, it was, uh, I think it was a Jerry Cohn movie uh, that he did called uh, Little Dead Rotting Hood. Or yeah, something. I've, he got was that. The, I've seen that. I think yeah. uh, Eric Balfour was the sheriff. He was. Yeah, he was. so he was wonderful. Like, I was like, yeah. oh, so great to see him. Yeah. I would I would love to work with Eric Balfour. That, there was a stinker, but it was kind of a fun one, you know? If he will do stinkers, maybe he'll do our movies. I don't know. Sure, 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 sure. There you go. The next two are a pair of Nicolas Cage movies. As you know, I'm all about Nick Cage. So Hell yeah. first Blu-ray is a movie called A Score to Settle. Um, I'm not sure if you have this one already. You might. Uh, but these are all floating around uh, uh, Dollar you know, Tree. the dollar store these days. So. Uh, I, uh, had, uh, I think it's for next month. Call. Okay. And then I got one called uh, Between Two uh, Between Worlds. Nice. So I'm not sure what this one's about other than it sounds like it's probably some kind of science fiction thing. And uh, yeah, Penelope Mitchell's in there as well. And uh, Lydia Hurst and Hopper Penn. 
we shall see, but it's Nick Cage, so come on. Should be fun one way or another. The next one is one called Black Mass. Oh, and yeah, it's a Johnny Depp movie. Oh, yeah, 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 Johnny Depp. That is and, not uh, a stinker. I've heard it's actually pretty good. Oh, yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch is in there, and uh, mm -hmm. Rory Colcane, and uh, Kevin Bacon, I believe, shows up for a hot minute. Um, and then this is, it's funny, this actually, we were, remember when we were just watching the movie the other day, this came on as a, as a, um, as a preview, but Hammer of the Gods, it was that nice. one, uh, uh, where, they, and then you remember where it's like in 871, uh, these Viking warriors, blah, 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 blah. Well, that's what this is. So could be interesting. We shall see. It's probably going to be a stinker, but that's all right. Next, we have one called. The Resurrected Painted Skin. I, I don't know, but it's a bunch of chicks with swords. Uh, I think this is a Chinese film. Yes, it's definitely a Chinese film. Um, uh, Zhao Jun is in there, who uh, is gorgeous and fantastic and wonderful. And she's like in all the, all the Chinese chick with swords movies. She's going to be mm -hmm. in there because she's awesome. So, and then finally, this is one that just popped out of nowhere. I don't know anything about it, but it's called River World. At the first, I thought it looked like an avatar kind of a thing because it's got the very similar avatar look. Oh, to it. yeah, yeah. But it's the, not. It's some kind of uh, fantasy thing. And it's based on Philip Jose Farmer uh, story, which is interesting. And um, Alan Cummings is in there. So we shall see. Uh, and some other folks, too, that I don't know. But River World. Awesome. So those are the Blu-rays. Your All turn. Right. Tag your it. Okay. So I'm it. Um, so if you remember correctly, you and I this month went down to, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Second and Charles, and they had the free bin. And uh -huh. so uh, I picked up a bunch of Blu-rays that you were just like, eh, I don't care about. And uh, so the first one I picked out was a movie called Balls Out. Free is free, man. Balls out. It's a, I don't know what, I mean, it looks like a National Lampoon style comedy. Um, looks like crap, you know, honestly. I don't think it has anybody I know of or I wish I had my, uh, uh, yeah. I don't think it's got anybody big in it. But it's, you know, an epic sports movie for the guys who don't deserve it. That's what they say. You know, okay. Uh, this one stars Julie McCulloch and Patrick. Uh, I'm gonna butcher his name. La Laberto. I don't know. Uh, no, it's no, 2012 no. Ice Age. It's an asylum movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the uh, the DVD for that. Ah, uh, no, haven't seen. Well, it yet. I haven't seen it yet either, and I don't know. It just it looks like crap. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and then so I'm doing the craps first, the crap ones move first, doing the exact opposite of you. Um, so the next is uh, another movie. This, this is actually not supposed to be crap, I haven't seen it though. Um, it's from the director of Hell, no, wait, that's a Hellboy, but it's Old Boy, and it's called oh. Stoker. So uh, it's got uh, Nicole Kidman, Matthew Good, Mia Wasikowski or something. Ooh, I like her. I I don't know her much, but um, uh, she's she's a really good actress. Cool. Uh, and then I got this because I really love this movie. I saw it when I was in LA, and it's called Adventureland. It's really great because it takes place in a uh, theme park uh, where uh, they do like the games. And I used to do the games, you know, okay. stuff. So it's sort of like a walk down memory lane. And then uh, this I got from James L. Edwards. It's my own copy of Brimstone Incorporated nice. that I uh, that I wrote or co-wrote with him on one segment, Mama's Boy. And uh, it's got commentary and a bunch of other stuff. So very uh, nice. Oh, Where can the folks at home pick up a copy of that? I'll leave a link down at the bottom. Cool. Because I'd not, like to get a copy too. I'm not sure, like the exact link in my head, but I'll have to look it up and 
and uh, we I think it might be under like a brimstone incorporated dot com thing. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to get a copy of that. Um, and then I've got a bunch of four Ks. So these are my you know really typically good movies, I guess. Um, first one is Jaws. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't already have that in four K. I, you know, weirdly enough, I was gonna get it when I was in L.A. and then uh i just couldn't find it There's, it wasn't like at the local best buy or whatever i think it was at walmart and I, whatever it's just a pain in the butt so i was just like you know what and then i saw it at our my best buy in williamsburg and i was just like you know what picking this up is like 20 bucks well worth it um, shark you son of a bitch shark you son of a bitch all right so next is the that hunger awesome. the hunger games i'm gonna collect okay. all of them collect all four um then Top Gun, the Tom Cruise, uh, you know, like for 4K, I bet this looks pretty decent, you know, with all the flying, you know. I bet now, because they're doing Top Gun too. I bet now they're adding a lot of CGI stuff, and some of it might look really freaking awesome, you know. They'll probably put you in the seat, you know, do stuff that they could not do then. You're going to love this one, Full Metal Jacket. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. In 4K, I bet that's awesome. 4K, yeah. And my last but not definitely not least is the uh, uh, the Captain America Winter Soldier, which I'm on the Marvel kick I told you about. So hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, you know, so we'll see. Okay. And that is it for that. So that's it for my uh, Blu-rays. And I guess what what we've always done generally is do a year do your first half and then right. I'll do my next first half and then right. you know. so 15 15 right all right oh, I gotta reach because they're just giant stacks let's see here <laughs> okay so uh, these are all going to be stinkers and the very first one is a group stinker um, oh, fun! Because occasionally you you can get these for like a dollar at like um, oh one of the one of the the dollar stores where they just they don't have them in boxes they have them in these little sleeves. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So that's what this is. Which one is those? And it's got whoa! It's got die ner get it? Die. Oh, like it's a die, but it's a right. diner. And then it's got Revolt of the Zombies, which is a classic old stinker. River of Darkness. Autumn and Ashes. So Aww. five movies. Not bad. Not bad for a dollar. For a dollar. I'll buy that for a dollar. I'll buy that for a dollar too. Then we got three movies on one DVD. And this is, let's see, Long Time Dead, which is a Ouija board movie. Of course. My, My Little Eye, which I'm not sure about. And then Hood Rat, which... I'm pretty sure I know what that's going to be that. And that's with Ice-T and Isaiah Washington. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I mean, I, I don't know it, but, like, that just sounds like. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds like them. It's always a modern black exploitation film. Sort of, but, like, I don't know. Those movies. Next, are we got a movie called The Bloodlands, which is some kind of a thriller. Um with Pollyanna McIntosh, Lee Williams, and Joanne Mitchell. So that should be interesting. Then we have something called Alien Invasion, Encounter from Hell. And uh, that's, uh, let's see here. Charles Herrera is the director. And um, I don't think I know who, the, Lucy Tillett, that name sounds familiar. But other than that, I don't really know too many folks in that one. Next, we have a movie about an extraordinary mission called Extraordinary Mission. I had a feeling that's what I was about. Is that a Jackie Chan movie? Uh, no, but it is, a, it is a movie from Hong Kong, I believe, or at least China. So It looks like Jackie kind of Chan. Like It looks film. like something he would... Yeah, Jackie Chan light, probably. Whoever's passing for Jackie Chan these days, now that he's too old for that kind of shit. What I, you know? What I want to see Jackie Chan fight in a retirement home, sure. an old folks' home. You know that—that's sure. the Jackie Chan movie I want to see. Yeah, with a walker. 
<laughs> yes, you take your walkers and start hitting everybody with it. Or, right. or even better, the walker has guns in them, like bullets. <laughs> that works. That works. <laughs> That's a that's a Robert Rodriguez film right there. I'm gonna get I'm, next time if I ever meet him, I'm gonna pitch him that idea, and I bet he would go crazy. Like his uh, brain will start. He's just like me. His brain will start going, burr, burr, and he'll do it. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, the next one is a movie called Genesis, which I believe is some kind of like robot slash android kind of a film, and Olivia Grant, Warren Brown, and John Hanna are in it. Cool. Um, so there's that and there's that and then we have a uh horror film called the music box which i'm oh, guessing I have that. That's is a haunted music box itn put that out i have that oh okay itn very cool yeah you'll have a bunch of them at dollar tree next we have something called banshee chapter which actually comes with some special features, including an in-depth look at the making of the Banshee chapter. So that should be fun. And then this is a BBC one called Saving Our Skins, which is some kind of a horror comedy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, yeah, I have that. Okay, yeah, that's been floating around the Dollar Tree for a while. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six more in this group. We have something called The Night Crew. And that is Danny Treu, Bo oh, King nice. Holbines, and Luke Gross. Directed I love, by... I, I love Danny Treu. Like, no matter what he does, oh, yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. watch it. Uh, looks like it's written and directed by Christian Sesma. And uh, let's see. Okay. That should be fun. Now we have something from the executive producer of Paranormal Activity and Insidious called Intruders, which oh, looks yeah, like yeah. a I think I have that haunted too. house film. Or at least I know of it. Yeah. It looks all right. Rory Culkin is in there. It's, it's Blumhouse, I think, or something. Blumhouse, yeah. I'm surprised that their stuff is going to the Dollar Tree, but I guess... They got so I'm much. <laughs> well, I mean, they got just so much, so so much that yeah, they put yeah. out. Then this is going to be an interesting one. This is some kind of fantasy thing, but it's got people I never would have expected to be starring in a fantasy movie. It's called Seventh Son. Oh, I've heard of it. Yeah, it's got Jeff Bridges and Julianne Moore. Not two people I would have picked in a fantasy period kind of film. Um, so I'm very, very, hey, they need to, to eat that. Yeah. Yeah. Just like everybody else. But, yeah. um, I, I'm very curious. Kit Harrington, I think is in there too. Mm. So yeah, with, with that kind of a cast, why not take a chip for a buck? Come on. Did I ever tell you the, my Jon Snow story? Uh, no. So Heather used to say, um, you know, our, our friend Heather Kale used to look at me and say, or whatever she would say, uh, you know nothing, John Moody, right? Uh-huh. So I started watching Game of Thrones one day, and then all of a sudden, it, you don't know, you know, you don't, you know, you don't know anything, whatever, John Snow, you know, you know nothing, nothing John, John Snow. Snow, you know nothing, John Snow. So I eventually told her, I was on the phone with her, uh, um, and I said, so I just watched Game of Thrones, and I just now, I'm getting the whole, you know, nothing, John Moody. And she goes, wait, you didn't know that that was where that was from. And I go, no, she goes, you really don't know nothing, John Moody. <laughs> and then she hung up on me. And I was like, that is the best. Please, like, that's please our... tell me she's a redhead. It's Heather. It's a Nadia. Yeah, 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 I know. But that would have been perfect. I know. She it's dyes Nadia. her hair. It could have been, it could have been red at the time. Probably not. She, Probably she's not. either blonde or brunette. I know. All right, so last three. I'm gonna go then tag your it. Movie called Safe House The Crow. I guess they couldn't just call it the crow because that's been done. But uh and Steven, they couldn't call it Safe House because that's been done. So they gotta mash up the <laughs> title. Yes. Steven Moyer is in there, so um he's been in a bunch of stuff, but I don't know much about I think Steven him. Moyer, wasn't he in um True Blood? Yeah. 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 Well, all right. 
And then, because we got to have more Ouija's, this is Ouija Resurrection. I think uh, I have that too. Which is so Ouija fun. Experiment 2, because I already did Ouija Experiment last month. So this oh. is the second one. Got to Apparently there's and... several of those experiments and uh, we be banging on the Ouija. At stuff. least two of them. And then last one for this group is another multi-section. It's got four movies. The Midnight Movie Horror Fest, the Slasher one, and it includes Shallow Ground, Evil Remains, Severed Forest of the Dead, and Gone Dark with cool. Claire Forlani. I nice. love Claire Forlani. I know you were wondering, like, you, you keep saying she hasn't been in anything in a while, so. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. So very anxious to see that. See my girl. See how she's doing. And tag, you're it. All right. So uh, let me try to. Oh, God. Ugh. We're such nerds with all of All our of them movies. are like falling over and shit. So, <laughs> um, movie nerds. The first three are BBC things. One is called Outlaws, and I think it's a documentary about. Uh, Outlaws? I'm hoping. Uh, before Billy the Kid and Jesse James, the golden age of the outlaw blossomed the grape in Great Britain. So the Great Britain cowboys, I guess. Or did, whatever, did you say you've got three of them? Uh, I've got three BBC ones. You like your BBCs? I do. Next is Finding Phil. I don't know. It's a. It looks like a. It looks kind of cute. Honestly, it's a documentary. Oh, okay. Like is that little, an otter? It looks like an otter. So I think it's a little cute little thing. It's got a bonus feature with it too called Diving with Whales. So cute. And then Rise of the Clans. Oh yeah, I have that. Yeah. So it's another BBC and I think it's another documentary or like maybe it's not. It's Okay, it's the story of Scotland. So maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a kind of a biopic kind of thing on... Um, the rise of clan it's guys. okay i got some bbc's coming up in my next group okay <laughs> so, the bbc i don't know if i may have some in the other one too i don't know because these are all these are all dollar tree but i think i still have a couple dollar trees in the next group too there you go uh, a lot of these these are actually a lot of them are leftovers from like three months ago right right something. right we've been I buying just, stuff up so much it's and like, a lot of times i've been just when i buy stuff then I just put them in the, in this group instead of like waiting and everything. So the ones that I haven't gotten to yet that are just still, you know, I'm still there. I know. Hey, yeah. I bought 21 new ones today. So I get you. All right. So this one stars Michael Bean, um, GN Casper and William Forsyth. And it's called hidden in the woods. Ooh. William Forsyth. So, yeah. Hidden in the woods. Here you guys go. I don't know. It looks all right. And then uh, this one stars Vincent Pastore, Michael Madsen, Stephen Bauer, and Emilio Rosso. Uh, it's called Day of Redemption. Okay. Looks like a, your typical action shit. Well, Michael Madsen's trying to get himself in all kinds of movies. Oh, he always does. Uh, Taylor Lautner movie, Run the Tide. I don't know much about it, but it looks like a cheesy date movie kind of thing. I always like to have these because you just never know. If there's a girl that's going to want to watch one of these kind of cheesy chick flicks. Oh, you know, God. you'll always want to keep one around if you you want to get some. He's like the male Kristen Stewart. Uh oh, Taylor Lautner. Yeah, I've heard. Uh, what's his name is really good. Um, the other one from Twilight. Um, uh, Pan uh, Robert Paddington or. Patterson. Patters Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. Uh you know, he's playing like Batman and fucking Robert Downey Jr. even like was like, I'm excited to see him play Batman. And right. Robert is a good actor, you know, and he's if he's vouching for him, then I, I want to see more stuff with Robert Pattinson. He, he was in the lighthouse with Willem Dafoe. I need to watch it at some point. I just haven't yet. Um there's an Ethan uh Hawk movie. Uh yeah. Ethan Hawk actually directed a few things back in the day that I remember. One was called like Chelsea Hotel. And uh, I think he, you know, has done a couple other ones, but he did one with Ben Dickel Dickey, Ben Dickey, 
uh, Alia Shawcat, um, Josh Hamilton, Char- uh, Charlie Sexton, and Chris Christopherson. It's called Blaze. Okay. But that looks. I, I have a confession. For a long time, years ago, I used to get Ethan Hawke confused with um, Jude Law. Don't ask me why. They just were seemed interchangeable to me. I like Ethan Hawke. I don't know. I really do. Uh, this is a movie you had, and I don't know if you watched or not, but it stars Carla Gugino, um, damn, uh, Malin Ackerman, Rufus Sewell, Danny DeVito, Michael B. Jordan, and Rosario Dawson, and that is City of Sin. Yeah, City of Sin. Not Sin City, but City right. of Sin. And honestly, this is this is a snooze fest. <laughs> uh, the director of it uh, was married to Carla Gugino, and then she's in all his movies. And it's it's, it's Alan just, Moore, isn't it? Who? I thought it was an Alan Moore, just like no. Sin City. No, 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 no. It's not a comic, like or oh, okay. it's, not it's not based, based on a comic. Not based on a comic. It's just this uh, director, Sebastian Gutierrez, I think is his name, something like that. Okay. Um, he. But it's shot in a similar style. Oh yeah, no, it's supposed to be like Sin City, like F- Frank Miller's Sin uh, Sin City, but it's or so like it's black and white. Frank Miller, it's, that's that's what I meant. You know, very I didn't, I didn't mean uh, Alan Moore. I meant yeah, you yeah, meant Frank, Frank Miller. Miller, but uh, it it was just ugh, it was just crap. I was boring, you know. And you, what, what do you say about movies that are boring? It's the uh, sin cardinal of, sin of filmmaking. Cardinal sin of filmmaking, and um, maybe other people could like it. I just thought it was boring, you know. Sin City, it. Uh, City of Sin. City of Sin, gotcha. Yeah, Sin City is a good movie. The original. I yeah. haven't seen the sequel, but I've heard the sequel is okay. Uh, the first one is amazing, and Robert Rodriguez did a great job with Frank Miller. Uh. So the game goes from legal to lethal, bloodshot. Huh. No idea what that's about or anything, but there better be blood in it. Um, I don't, I don't there know. There will be blood. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, then here's another movie, and kind of has a great cast, but I can't read it. Okay, it's got Rory Culkin in it too. In this okay. one, okay. Rory Culkin, Lynn Shay. Oh. Oh yeah. I'm I love sure. her. I used to. I interviewed her back in the day. She's really sweet. Uh, Devay Chase. Oh my goodness. Something Hunter. I can't. I can't read this. It's too. Uh, Lewis Hunter and Nikki Reed, and it is directed by Thomas Decker, who I, uh, I I've loved him from like he was in. He played John Connor in the. Um, like Sarah Connor Chronicles the series. He's, yeah. Yeah. in the series. And he's been in a bunch of like indie films and stuff uh, like Chrome Skull, late to rest Two, and stuff like that. Uh, and he directed this movie called Jack goes home. And yeah. I want to, I want to check this out at some point for sure. Uh, yeah. I think I got that several months ago. I, it's in my pile of stuff I have to get to, to watch. Yeah. So here's a movie called indigenous. Um, I guess it's about indigenous people or something or whatever. Um, I don't know much about it. Uh, here's something that you, I never thought would be in the uh, Dollar Tree, but it was. It's a Transformers cartoon. Uh, and I was yeah. like, oh, sure, or why not? You know? I, I, there were a few of them. In fact, there were a number of of like Marvel like and DC comic sort of animated things in there too but yeah i'll probably check those out at some point not really my thing but you know um so peter cosgrove shayla alvarez and whatever is this itn this looks like an itn movie uh yeah it is it's an itn movie it's called pagan warrior Mm -hmm. i have that too and it looks like okay i'll check it out I'm doing we're oh never mind I'll tell you guys we'll we'll talk about it in this you know later there's something that comes up about that. It's a lot of fantasy historical stuff, period stuff that's out there now these days. Especially I, ITM puts out yeah, a lot of them yeah, out. That's cool. That's uh, cool. because like a lot that. of them are actually not made in the US too. They're foreign films. Right. Uh, so they're actually made in like right. um, England. England or Ireland or Scotland or anywhere else that's not here, you know. Where they drink uh, lots of tea. Yeah. Because it's um, IT. 
N. <laughs> M. <laughs> uh, okay, so this movie stars uh, world champion soccer star Alex Morgan, and it's called Alex and Me. And I guess it's like a little girl gets the chance of a lifetime to like, you know, be like her hero, Alex Morgan and whatever. So it's a kid soccer movie, you know, or whatever. It looks okay. And then last, but on this half, but certainly not least, is a movie called Clash of Empires. And I don't know, this looks like a parody, but I don't think it is, <laughs> which yeah. makes it even worse. Um it is legend born from blood of war. I mean, I don't know. Just clash of empires. Just, but maybe it's like asylum. Like I don't know. Um, I wouldn't mind getting something from the asylum. Wait, did they? They didn't put it out. But yeah, let's. Eh, whatever. So that's it. That's my half. Now your your last half. All right, my last group of fifteen. Uh, let me reach down and grab. Uh. So half of these are going to be more dollar store things. And then we're going to get into some of the special order stinkers that I got from Amazon. So first up, we got a couple more, either ITN or, yeah, this is ITN. Uh, William the Conqueror. I'm sure you already have this one. If I'm not you sure. Don't, you will. Of him. <laughs> So, but this is an actual film. It's not a documentary. Sometimes they do documentaries. This is the actual film. Followed by something I hadn't seen before until just the other day. And this is not ITN, but it is King Arthur Excalibur Uprising. So it's another fantasy period piece. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that should be interesting. Should Always be. loving that. And then we have something called Ancient Warriors. I got this at Book Exchange in Norfolk. And it's got, of all people, Franco Colombo, who was um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's buddy in the Pumping Iron movie. Oh, nice. He was in a bunch of Italian, you know, he was like an Italian muscle man guy. So he was in a bunch of stuff. And Daniel Baldwin's in there. And uh, Richard Lynch is in there. And, you know, a couple oh, other God. folks. That sounds awesome. Richard Lynch, so, I love him. Yeah. Then we got a flick called Bride of the Scarecrow because, you know, once upon a time there was like a million Scarecrow movies and uh, now I guess they're still rolling out and this is Bride of Scarecrow. So, you know, then, it's, it's funny because, yeah, like uh, you're right. There were like a huge amount of them or whatever, but... Mm -hmm. um, then all of a sudden it kind of disappeared. Right. Well, they weren't very good. So, right. You know, not that that's ever stopped anyone before for putting out a movie, but it's all right. Exactly. That's why folks like us love to go trolling through the dollar store to find them. Oh, yeah. Next, we got a movie called Ghost Stories. This is a Scream Factory uh, release. Oh, wow. Screen. And that was at the Dollar Tree? I was at the Dollar Tree and written and directed by Jeremy Dyson and Andy Neiman. And it's got Andy Neiman in there, Paul Whitehouse, uh, Alex Lawther, um, and Martin Freeman. Ghost well, I know I know Martin Freeman. Well, I mean, I don't know him personally, but I know of him. Okay. Next is another uh, supernatural horror film called Witchcraft. Not witchcraft, but witch. Craft. Uh, this is a BBC, and um, Nigel Williams is in there, and it's directed by Peter Sazdy. So I don't know who that is. Um, no idea. Don't know either. We will find out. When you watch it, right? Are you going to watch right. it? I shall. And here comes your buddy, uh, Tony Todd, in a movie called Sushi Girl. Ah! Oh, sorry. My also my buddy, Courtney. Uh, um, oh, God, fuck. <laughs> my brain is just not on right now. Uh, Courtney um, Palm. Courtney Palm. Okay. Yeah, she plays well, Sushi Girl. Oh, okay. Well, in addition, uh, Mark Hamill's in there and Noah Hathaway and Sonny Chiba. 
Um, all kinds Courtney of Palm was the main girl in uh, Zombievers. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. And uh, uh, Jeff Fahey shows up there. Danny Trejo shows up in there. So, oh my goodness, there you go. That's Sushi a girl. that's a thing. Uh, now we're getting into some of the stuff that I special ordered. So, here you go. I saw the the, the thing for this, and I, I was not going to pass this up. Called "All Cheerleaders Die." Yep, I've I've got that. So, yep, gotta love anything with cheerleaders in it. I think uh, Lucky, Lucky McKee. McKee. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's done all kinds of interesting stuff in there. Brooke May, in there, <laughs> which is really cool. Yeah, so. Gotta love a, a good stinky cheerleader flick. Next, we have one. Uh, you're gonna love this. Upside Down Cross. Nice. With Aaron Ross, David Yao from the Jesus Lizard, and of course, the wonderful, wonderful Tina Krause. Yay! Yay, and it's a William Hellfire uh, movie. He's done all kinds of indie stuff for a long, long time. And uh, this one we... I've actually seen. It's pretty darn good. It's a little disturbing, but but it's good. But that's good, you know, because like, I I really feel that in indie films today, they have to entertain you in some way. So either they entertain you with the shock value, which some people are into, like, you know, disturbing stuff, whatever, or they just, you know, they um, entertain you with just being funny or interesting or whatever, right? right? But if you're not, if you're not interesting enough or whatever, you know, like you're boring, you know, like unfortunately, the sin movie was. I hate to go back to that, but like, if you're if you're boring, then you know it kind of takes takes person out of the movie. I had to stop it after like, I gave it like forty five minutes of that city of sin, and then I was just like, hmm. well, this next one was a real treat, and it's a double feature of two completely different movies that I wanted in various forms and times. And somehow it got squished together by a group called Frolic Pictures. And it's a grindhouse double feature. And it is Curse of the Blue Lights along with The Wild Wild Wang. Two completely different movies. Now, Curse of the Blue Lights, that has had a reputation for being a very gory, very intense, but still laughably crazy, bizarre, stinky movie that I've been dying to get my hands on for a long time. Never saw it, always wanted it. And then the Wild Wild Wang, I, I had a copy. It was a DVR copy because you couldn't get it because it wasn't released in the United States. The only way you could get it was somebody copied it for you and then sold the copy. And that's right. what I have was a DVR. So now I actually have, uh, this is like my third actual real copy of is a Wang Wang Is that the film. movie that, um, wait, so is that a real movie or is that a documentary? No, that's the Wild Wild Wang. That's the one where he's... Um, he kind of goes back in time and it's like a it's like a Filipino Western. And he's This is Wang Wang, right? This is Wang Wang, yes. And it's got the it's got this wonderful, wonderful thing at the end where even though it's a Western, he uh he he's on a Jeep with a Gatling gun shooting at there's supposed to be Native Americans on horseback, but there are a tribe of midgets on tiny ponies shooting bows and arrows at them. What? It's just crazy. Oh, didn't Andrew do a uh, documentary though? What was yes, it called? Yes, that was Search for Wing Wing. Search for Wing Wing. Okay. Right, right. And this is one of the movies that's on. It's in the great, great, you know, Wing Wing um, uh, group of films that you have to see. Wonderful. I mean, that sounds like an in indie film cafe. If I've never oh yeah, heard one. so definitely. <clears throat> we haven't definitely. done a Wang Wang movie since the first season, but right. bro, like but how the hell those two completely different movies got stuck on one is beyond me. But thank you, thank you, Frolic Pictures. I don't know who you are, but I'm going to go to your website and buy everything you've ever made. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you You're go. Right here. Next one, we have one that I've heard about. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I'm curious to see what it's like. It's called savage island i've seen it years ago oh yeah so it was a movie that uh i remember at the video store when i used to work at um because it's pretty old it's like 2001 it's I wanna say. 2002 2002 maybe um but i used to work at a video store and i would see savage island all the freaking time and so i was like i gotta watch this and i think it's like on an uh, island like a resort island and somebody's killing people off or what, you know, I mean, and those kind of things are a lot of 
fun, you sure. know, like as long as like they don't take themselves too freaking seriously, they just enjoy themselves. So. Right, 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 right. And speaking of a lot of fun and not taking yourself too seriously, here's a movie with somebody that we were just talking about, Clown Town, with uh, your boy uh, Brian Nagel. Oh, Tom right? Nagel. Tom. Tom Nagel. Now Brian uh, Nagel's in it too, and that's his brother. But oh, gotcha. I met both of them. Know. I met both of them. But um, Tom is, uh, yeah, no, Tom's a great guy. I've actually got that. I've got that specific one you know dvd signed by all the actors and nice, stuff nice um, nice it's awesome Plus yeah, clowns. Tom, tom directed that movie he was a uh, also the star of a little movie that we just did called jolly roger jolly roger you know you can watch that you can listen to that over at indiefilmcafe.podbean.com absolutely next we have a wackadoodle asian martial arts film that i've been looking for called equals against devils and don't ask me what it's about. All I know is it has ridiculous fighting scenes and just crazy shit flying all over the place. And that of should course. be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, if anyone is a big fan of Asian cinema, it's me. Um, of course. Of course. And then we have two more left before I, I send it back to Mr. Moody. But these two movies I know are near and dear to your heart. Um, I've had a digital copy of this for a long time, but I finally got the physical copy of Witch House 2, Blood Coven. Yay! Yay! So, you know, I mean, of all the Witch House movies, this is probably the one that's, you know, not quite as good as the other two. But Really? Uh, did you fun. watch this one? Uh, yeah, I've had it. Like I said, I had the digital copy. Um, I honestly, it would be the exact, well, it would be Witch House 3 is my favorite. Which House 2 is my second, and Which House 1 is my least. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And that's because, uh, I mean, and as much as I love David Dakota, and you know that, uh, I I feel like the whole movie set in the Witch House itself it gets kind of boring after it's a, a witch while. in a house. It's a witch house. I know. Like, I get it. Like, I get it. Like, it's it's weird to me that I want them out of the house, you know? Because know. when it's called Witch House, but it's just like, I mean, if you can make things more interesting for dialogue or characters or things, you know what I mean? That, and I, I mean, maybe Matthew Jason Walsh, who wrote it, I think he wrote all of them or, or so. Wonderful guy, love him to death. Um, I've known, known him for years since my space and shit. Um, I love him, but I just, I feel like, I don't know, maybe it was just done way too fast because I just felt like the characters weren't well, good enough. Well, since it is, of course, Jar Bookholder, it would be kind of fun if zombie cops showed up at Witch House. That would be a fun mashup. <laughs> I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> and then the last one for my special group is one that I know you love. Chainsaw Cheerleaders. Aww. <laughs> With Tiffany Shepis, Debbie Roshan, and, uh, of course, Jackie Hall. Everybody, okay, so I've been watching these, uh, like, reviews of Chainsaw Cheerleaders, and that, like the guys at um, uh, Blood Bath and Beyond, they reviewed it and they said they they didn't know. I think at the time they had never seen Jackie do anything, and mm -hmm. they were like, "We didn't we didn't really care for this movie, but that Jackie chick was like made it fun, you know." There you go. And I I sent that review over to her because. I mean, it made my day. She's probably going to message me today because she hasn't talked to me in a couple. Okay, well, know. Tell, tell her I got it and tell her that, you know, the, despite the fact that, yeah, she, she was a gorgeous actress and all that, I really do think that her acting chops are really, really, they're legit, especially with comedy. I think she's very, very good. I don't think she gets enough credit that she deserves. And I'd really like to work with her more than what we did in the past. Right. And we plan to, I mean, she she'll do stuff with me she won't do stuff but like you know she won't she doesn't like to act much but uh if i called her out of retirement to act in a couple of things well me. you think donald farmer could get her again no <laughs> as a friend she'd hang out with them or meet up with them or something but that's i think that's it i don't know don't quote me on that because i can't uh I can't you speak never for her, know but... man there could be a chainsaw I... your leaders too in the future <laughs> I don't think so, um, but I'd watch you know, it. I would too, but that doesn't mean she'll be in it. That might mean there might be a Chain Soul Cheerleaders too. Um, all right, so my my group. Uh, so here's uh, speaking of Jackie, 
her boyfriend gave me a bunch of movies and I'm still going through all of them, you know, and a lot of them are mainstream films because he doesn't collect indie films like us, you know, he's a, he's a normie, you know, he likes normal shit, I guess. And I'm guessing this was something that he got for his kids or something because it's a little movie called Buddy starring Rene Russo, but it's like Jim Henson. So he's got, he's got to have Rene Russo. I want to know what, wonder what happened with her. Rene Russo. So I'm, Kind of interested in checking it out. It's from Jim Henson Pictures, so maybe Muppets are in it. I don't know. That'd be cool. Yay, you know? Muppets and uh, Puppets. You know I love right. that. I know you do. The next one I'm going to show is uh, you know, a movie that I'm not sure if I had before anyway, but I, I kept it because otherwise they're just going to go in the trash. It is The Patriot starring Mel Gibson. I've never seen it, but I've heard it's a pretty decent movie, you know. I think yeah. did he direct that movie too or something or just act in it? I'm not sure. I think he just acted in it. I'm not sure. All right. So here's the three movie Warrior Pack. This is uh, going to be part of, uh, I've only got two left. For, no, three left from the uh, Dollar Tree. So this is three Warrior Pack. It's got the assailant, Wushu Warrior, and Jackie Chan and Kung Fu Master. Yeah, I think I bought that a couple of months ago. Yeah. Did you show it off or have you? Yeah, mentioned? yeah. Okay. Did. Uh, see, I don't remember. Like, I don't remember yesterday, so I can't remember what you show off or what Wushu I show Warriors off. Warriors stuck out. That's the one of the of the group that stuck out. So, uh, so then here's another movie. I don't know. It's by BBC. It's called Curse of the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Looks like I have cool. that too. Yeah, hmm. so, that's the haunted ship movie. And I think you told me that you've seen this movie or know much about it but uh mermaid the lake of the dead yeah i've got a copy of that i think i showed you this and you said oh yeah i have a i have that or whatever um it's got a bunch of people i've never heard of it looks like it's from another country um so but it's a screen factory so there you go all right and then these three are from the uh second and charles from the uh the dump bin and everything oh no actually wait I take that back. Okay, two of these. These two are from the dump bin. So this is the shortcut. Actually, I think I bought this from the regular. Thing. I don't think I know that one. The I actually I think about this from the regular one. This wasn't in the dump bin. But uh, so Nicholas Goosen, uh, I know about this because this is Happy Madison, aka Adam Sandler's production company's first horror film. Now they've done another movie called Hooby Halloween, which is a horror comedy and. You know, it's, it's, I don't know, some stupid, silly stuff, right? I don't know any of this stuff at all. But uh, they did this, which is a real horror film. Um, it's, I guess it's a, D Dave Franco stars in it, Katrina Bowden. Dave uh, Franco, okay. Yeah, uh, Drew Seeley. And uh, so they called this Scary Madison Productions, you know, for just to separate it from Happy Madison you know um and so it says some urban legends are real so you know how i am extremely jealous of dave franco for uh, i know for for marrying allison brie i know oh, oh, oh. this was in the dump bin and this is broken flowers uh starring oh. uh it's a jim jarmusch film starring bill murray and i've been wanting to see it i think i've I don't think I've seen anything in it, but um, wow, Jim Jarmusch film ends up in the dump pile. That's uh, what are the days coming to, man? I mean, somebody didn't want it, and I guess it was like, kind of messed up or something. They couldn't sell it too artsy, you know. Maybe the other one is Scarecrow Slayer. There you go. <laughs> so we were talking about just Scarecrow stuff. I didn't want to nice. spoil it, but yeah, um, I was you were with me. I was at the where this is second Charles, and then. My last pile, uh, my last group here. Um, I believe all of these. Oh, oh, never mind. Hold on, real quick before we go into that. There's another movie from the dump pile, um, which is Fahrenheit 9 11. Oh, yeah, I've had you know, that starring Michael Mad uh, ago. Michael Madsen. No, Michael uh, Moore, another MM, uh, Michael, but uh, Michael Moore who now this directed by Michael Madsen might have been more interesting. Nah. Uh, but no, it, it he was... does the dance with the razor blade in it. 
Uh, so the rest of these are all, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, are all sent to me from uh, our, our my buddy, Eric Sputik, who you haven't met yet, but uh, if I go, we go back out to LA, I'll have to introduce you to him because sure. he's a great dude. Um, so the first one is a movie called Spectre. So uh, I don't know anything about it. Um, I don't think sounds he even like a, has anybody I know. Sounds like a ghost movie. Yeah, it's some kind of ghost movie. So looks okay. It looks creepy. Also looks like your movie. The 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 one that looked, you know, see how the head's like the Oh River World. Yeah. yeah doesn't it have that yeah. like little avatar feel, but it's not uh, avatar. Maybe the artwork was done by the same production company. Maybe. Um here's another movie. Um I want to eventually do on um like one of our like either our uh quick review thursday or our uh one of the ones like or even maybe an indie film cafe thingy you know or whatever but um it's called bone jangles oh yeah 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 yeah. I, it's another one that i have but i haven't gotten haven't gotten to see yet it's it's in that it stars pile of stuff it stars Reggie Bannister, Alyssa mm. Dowling. Oh, I love her. She's so sweet. Um, then a bunch of other people I don't know. So those are the only people I know. And Brett DeJager, I, I think I'm friends with him on Facebook, where I know of him or something, because I've, I, I know that name. Um, but Bone Jangles, I've heard really good things, actually. So um, Yeah, I have it. I just haven't seen it yet. Here's a movie that stars Sean Patrick Thomas, who is in Cruel Intentions and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Dean Stockwell and Blanche Baker, and it's called Deep in the Darkness. Huh, I don't know that one. And uh, it looks okay. I mean, Dean Stockwell in itself is just kind of cool. Uh, anybody else? Um, nope, nobody I know of, but looks, I mean when he was he was doing a thing where if you go to his Budic movie empire which is on facebook uh sometimes he has deals where uh if you buy like 12 dollars worth which is like uh and get six movies you get six movies and it's free shipping so it's like just spending 12 bucks you know or mm, whatever check on, it out. yeah is so there a link someplace or I, like I said, I, I mean, I can send it to you, but like Please. literally all you got to do is look up Sputic Movie Empire on uh, Facebook. Uh, I'd have to spell it right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there you go. Uh, deep in the darkness. Then there is Shark Zone, which ah. is a shark movie I've never seen, but it looks like crap, uh, which is very funny because I showed this to Madeline Deering and she said she's never seen this either. But she's been, it's been on her, like, I want to check this out kind of thing. So who knows? Maybe we'll discuss it in her, on her shitty shark show. Where, where um, is Madeline Deering? Where, where is she located? I'm not sure. Yeah, it's I a, can't it's even... Nearby, I'd love to have her come out and oh, do yeah. like a Saturday and do shitty shark Saturday and do a bunch of movies with her. That'd be fun. She would love that. Um. All right, so I got this. I was really excited when he had this. It's a four pack. So it's my only like pack that has, well, other than the warrior pack, but it's got a uh, Roger Corman pack. Ah. And it's got a uh, bucket of blood, little shop of horrors, the terror and the wasp woman. Oh yeah. I've got yeah. them all. So all the classics yep, kind of yep, ones yep, all yep. in one, all in one. Um, I'm there kinda, you go. Watch the terror, the single most boring film ever. ever I've heard it's pretty ever. boring. So, so and it's got Boris Karloff and Jack Nicholson. I'm sure they love being in that movie. And then last but not least, and I picked this as last because we just did it for a quick review Thursday. And I absolutely be we absolutely trashed this movie. It's called The Church. Oh, yeah. And we, you know, <laughs> oh my God, you and me, we just did this and it was terrible, awful. But it was one of the ones I got from Eric because I saw it and I was like, that sounds interesting. And then it turns out that they're making a sequel. Woohoo! The second offering. I can't and wait. You can't wait to trash that one too? Well, I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Well, maybe it's better. Maybe they learned. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping not. 
You're hoping it's just as bad. Oh man, well, I was we, highly entertained. Well, see, that's the thing. When people make movies like Birdemic, then they start going, "Oh, so everybody's laughing at us now, so we'll just make it a comedy." Problem is, then it's not funny because you don't know comedy. Right. You know, you know unintentional comedy. You know, you know people are laughing at you because you're making crap, but now, you know, you making I just did you, so you see think if Big Shark's not going to be funny? Is that what you're saying? That is, that's a good discussion. So I think Tommy Wiseau has gotten hip to the fact that people don't find his stuff good. And so he's just making <laughs> trash on purpose, you know, right? Right. You know, and the problem is when you know you can, you know, you're making trash, you don't make trash. You see what I'm saying? Right, so sure. I just think it's just going to be, it's going to be obnoxious. Now and that is why Neil Breen is such a diamond because he doesn't think he's making, he thinks he's making great movies and he's not, but he thinks he is. And so he hasn't changed the way that he's made any of his films. They're just going to get even more entertaining as they go on. Well, you saw the troll documentary, right? Um, Done by the the guy, the kid from the Troll Two, Troll Two documentary about like the best worst movie. Right. You've seen that. Well, the director of Troll Two actually thought the movie was good. You know, so when people were like laughing at it in screenings and people are telling him, you know, how was it to make this terrible movie? You could see the hurt <laughs> in his, you know, like hurt in his eyes. You know, like he legitly thought this was a good movie and, and it so might have been if they had had somebody to help translate from the italian crew to the english speaking actors who had no idea what they were saying right <laughs> what was what was that line you uh you um what was he what was that line he was saying to his son um you can't oh, you can't piss on something i forget on humanity or something like that like you can't piss on you or something like that oh god like like how did they not know but see george hardy sweet guy as he is like i've interviewed him he's sweet as hell you know like he wasn't an actor he was a fucking dentist you know <laughs> that's all he wanted to be too he didn't want to be an actor he just happened in fact he thought this movie would just disappear you know nobody would ever ask about it again all oh, um dear. and the other girl the girl in it she would go to auditions because she was a real actress you know she would go on auditions and she would leave le leave troll to off her resume on purpose and then she would get to the auditions and people would go um you know people would look at her and be like we're even troll two we we got a spring troll two on one of our one of our co-hosts who's never seen it and we got to see that their reaction. That would be a great IFC. Or even the room, too. Or the room. Those, those would be great Patreon only ones. For sure. Because, or Plan 9, like stuff like that. Like, where I, I just don't feel like doing it on Indie Film Cafe is a good idea because they're just too. They're, they're well known. They're well known. And so doing a Patreon, Patreon only would be perfect. But they're not that well known that people like Lenore are going to know anything about it because she's not going to know. <laughs> I would hope not. Uh, all right. Well, uh, that's the end of our haul. But now we go to our fun little updates and the stuff that's going on. So and this is all you. <sighs> um, so we've had a so the April's been come and gone. We haven't. Um, honestly, I've been taking breaks, you know, because I've been working on the script for Psychotica, which is our big uh, action horror epic movie that I am literally almost done with the script. Uh, just got a few more pages to write and I'm done. I could, I might even be done with it tonight. If not tonight, tomorrow. More cow oh, scenes. More cow scenes for sure. M-O-A-R cow That's scenes. Right. Um, so hashtag more cow scenes. <laughs> um, but no, um, I've just been so busy with that that I've actually been taking breaks from doing a lot of the podcast stuff. Um, will that continue into May? 
actually sort of maybe probably because i still got a few other things to write and pre-production starts for psychotica april has been a super busy month for pretty much everybody i you know we had to sort of give april a pass for sexploitation sleaze cast we almost had to give it a, a pass for blue cheese but you and i managed to do uh with slave girls from beyond infinity which is very cool did i put and, that out yeah i, I, I hope so <laughs> i might not have uh -oh. Well, you got to do it tonight, buddy. Uh, okay. So it's there for April. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I haven't put out the Patreon only. I got to do that, which is we just did a Patreon only, and you can find out if you become a Patreon fan. But um, yeah, it's it's better that we do it at the end of the month anyway. And it's so. a good Patreon only episode. I'm not going to spoil it and say who it is, but it's a lot of fun. Uh yeah. So we got we got a fun we got a fun one. I think I I did it. It was mine. Mm -hmm. So yours next month. So I'm excited to see <laughs> what havoc you spring on me on that one. Um, or if you find somebody else or whatever, because I think that's our plan was like, Oh no, I'm going to torment oh, you, but we'll find somebody else. to do We it have with. to find somebody else. Cause that's yeah, the other yeah. thing is that we realized <laughs> doing it last week that we needed a third person. So we need somebody, we're going to need people to come in and watch the Patreon only ones we had mm. before so that we can get a third vote. They don't, we don't necessarily have to do another uh, uh, podcast, but we do need to get another third vote for, our thing because we are gonna uh take the votes and we're going to tally them up and uh, uh add them into the ladder of stink a ladder of stink and say which ones are stink will you add will you need a new ladder of stink for that because that's not I a might. film ca cafe it's um, getting bigger and bigger i know all of it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger that's what that's she, said. she said uh-huh i knew you were gonna go with that I just like your thumbs up. Whenever you send me thumbs up, I'm like, he's going to send me a thumbs up right now. <laughs> you were so fucking predictable. Because it's easy. It's one, I push one button and I'm done. I don't have to sit there and type anything. I know. But I, I like me, I would rather hear okay, not just K or the thumbs two. up. You know, two fucking letters. Two letters. Just do it. No, too busy. <sighs> That's just, whatever. Um, so yeah, so thankfully sometimes you'll send me the thumbs up and then you'll give me like an explanation or something. And I'm like, all right, you're not a total douche. Uh, cause I thought I can hate boo, boo. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I hate that shit. That's just a pet peeve of mine. Um, so now that I say that people are going to send me thumbs ups to whoever watches this, they're just, you know, um if they get to this part i don't know um i don't know who listens to the whole thing of this i don't know if anybody listens to our halls but it doesn't matter we do them anyway we do them we don't do them for people we do them for ourselves um mainly to look back because sometimes i actually watch these things when i'm like doing something i'll watch them because i want to see what what i what i especially my older ones you know from back in the older like 2000 and 18 hall or whatever you know oh, look back at those ages. yeah it feels like the dark ages jesus christ um back when i was doing trolling for stinkers i know well we just started that's when that was like the time we really started the uh thing so this is going on three years or four years something like yeah, that three, yeah, yeah. whatever so uh we've been doing this for a while now God, which i'm happy about how many movies have we bought over the past three or four years don't i don't don't remind <laughs> me because that just that just makes me think of all the money i, know. I spent um but fortunately the dollar store is a wonderful place because they're only a buck that's why they're called the dollar tree where everything's a dollar thank you know. dollar tree for putting out these news and it's interesting because like you're saying i mean we've got screen factory in there you got wild eye releasing in there you got bbc in there you got i mean this is where a lot of indie films end up so they might start in walmart or they might start at some of the other big retail but eventually the ones that don't get sold they all end up at the dollar tree yeah i mean they got to make their money somehow man and i mean it kind of sucks because you know like i i forgot what i what it was but kiss of the damned was at the dollar tree right Right. You know, and I told somebody about that and they were like, that's sad. Like a good movie gets like put in the Dollar Tree. But at least somebody bought it. There's money going towards, you know, the artist and the production crew uh, company that, that made it. It's better than it's sitting in, you know, a warehouse doing nothing. Right. Um, and we so liked it. 
Yeah, it was. We we did a uh, a quick review Thursday. That should be up in June. So for that quick review Thursday, you've got one more in May that you've done. Then you've got that one, and then you need to sit. We need either we'll do more together, or you'll do them by yourself or whatever the way you were doing them before. But it doesn't matter. See, that was that's another thing we we're talking about. So we'll go down the list of things that are you will be seeing for sure. You'll be seeing more quick review Thursdays. Man Eaters ends, I believe, in June or July. I'm not sure. I think June. So I think June it ends, and then we start ITN, like an ITN show that I'm starting where I'll be reviewing ITN movies and a lot of them you can see on Tubi and stuff like that. So we'll be reviewing those. Tubi with, Tuesdays. Uh, Tubi Tuesdays. Um, like Ruby, Ruby Tuesdays. Exactly. Yeah, okay. I get it. I get it. Took me a second. Um, so yeah, so there you go. So we've got that and uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, I just brought back indie film, no indie corner radio. Um, so that'll be back for, um, that's actually going to be a weekly show. Now I think I told you it was going to be like a bi-weekly show it's turning out to be a weekly show because like, it's just turns out that we're just doing them back to back right now. Like, um, I wasn't planning it because I originally I planned on it being a monthly show, you know, then I, all of a sudden I started getting too many people. So it'd be like, I would have somebody that I would interview and then they'd be all the way in August, you know? And I was like, uh, I don't want to, you know, like that's just too long for me to wait on something, you know? So <clears throat> I decided to do it uh, bi-weekly, and then I just literally just put it out early, you know? So the first episode, Sean Kanan, uh, that needed to be out because he had a actual code that if you go to the, Go to it on the YouTube channel. Uh, you check it out. There's a code for a discount for his book. For his so, book, yeah. Yeah, so that's awesome. It's a discount code Moody. So there you go. Um, and then uh, what else? Um, let's see. What else is there? Uh, fuck. Um, we get a lot of podcasts going. Now, May may bring uh, – May may – May may bring um, back, uh, I think it's going to have Hooked on Hitchcock will be back because we do have an episode of that that's going to go up. Uh, then she, Larry Butler, and I will be back with that show. So that's pretty cool. I miss, should... I miss Larry. Yeah. yeah. We should, I was just going to say we should cover May in May. Well, no, because that's what the update's about, May. Oh, no, the movie May. Oh, Jesus. I was like, what the fuck? We should cover May in May. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so updates all about May because we're about to get into this uh, month. Uh, I've already done May. I did May and October for oh, the okay. twenty for the thirty one days of October. Indie, indie, thirty one days of indie. Whatever. I don't. Man, <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm like not even getting my names right. And you're juggling five thousand shows. I know, and I've gotten five episodes of thirty one days of indie horror already done. So that's good. I've gotten five. One of them took a while because my co-host Kinsey, uh, Kinsey Phillips, love her to death. She just was so busy with stuff. So I would go, oh, do you have time to watch, watch that? And she'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. And then she would be like, can we push it to next week or next week? And then eventually we, we did it, which was great. Um, and then uh, so we got, um, yeah, I'm juggling 20 shows right now mm. and i'm boring paul while i'm doing it no i'm just tired i work today i gotta work tomorrow i've been working on the script all day so i'm tired too like there's just been a lot going on um what else uh oh so your sexploitation sleaze cast should return in may so that's good um you know, i'm also selling my house so i gotta go through that with the realtor i got all kinds of stuff coming up then i gotta find a place to live so it's just there's just so much going on it's just crazy yeah, i get it um and then uh so let's see um so sex exploitation sleaze guess we did do two episodes of indie film cafe that will never change that's the, the that's the thing that's constant no matter what if we have to find somebody that like you know scrape them off the 
whatever and and like and just get them there you know um by hook or crook you're getting two episodes per month i like to plan things ahead but sometimes they don't go like planned you know and you have to make do with what you had uh this this uh month we had elizabeth fletcher and uh sarah atkins both joining us for two different uh shows your shows and my show and and liz had a fun time with jolly roger being so terrible and sarah atkins Oh my God, bless her heart. She um she really did enjoy how bad uh horror of whatever horror of the blood monsters, aka horror of the blood vampire men from the lost planet, aka about a billion other titles. titles. Yeah, great great movie for like if you just want to be like because I I don't almost I think I even told you this, but it almost felt like a what the fuck Friday kind of movie. It oh, just yeah. like started off really weird and then got even weirder. And and just... if you were wanting out out there to want to watch John Carradine play a crotchety old coot, this is your film. Crotchety old coot who like you know apparently is the captain on a spaceship, you know. So all he does, like I guarantee you, they only used him for one day. They sure. had him come out for one day. He had all his lines. He had all his scenes, and then he went home, got his paycheck, and went home. Um, yep. Actually, John Carradine is the Eric Roberts of his time, pretty much. You know, just would do anything that paid him. You yes, know, he would. Yes, he and would. like he didn't care. Um, David Carradine, however, before he unfortunately passed, he would uh, be very careful of what he picked. You know, and everything, and only did things he was pretty i mean like he might have done indie films but i think he enjoyed those things you know? so one was very caradine full and the other was not very caradine full no that didn't work as well um there's the other robert caradine was oh, yeah, like the yeah, nerd yeah. And, you know revenge of the nerds guy or whatever and that's about it i think so i don't know there's keith caradine there's a lot of caradines god damn mm-hmm. the family man it's all guys two i think there might be a girl in there but really it's it's mainly the guys that are famous um but anyway um so yeah so we got the indie film cafe so by hooker by crook you will get that and they those will be on the uh second and fourth monday of the month no matter what um the first monday so i had a schedule right i have a schedule it's just it's going to be like, I think June when the schedule starts really filling up with stuff, maybe once again, I may t- be taking breaks from things. Also, I did a Hollywood knockbuster. So we're going to be bringing that back and that comes out tomorrow. So I have to, to do that after the show, uh, put that up on the pot, pot being tomorrow, but or for tomorrow. And but, we got to bring, bring back film freaks and we got to bring back criteria watch. And we got to bring fuck back Friday. The fuck Fridays. We got maybe uh, forgotten horror classics someday. Who knows? Well, I think forgotten horror classics maybe next year. Yeah, I think uh, so. Just because you are so freaking busy. And I think, honestly, I hate to say it, but I think you're, you would be excited when Se- Sexploitation Sleazecast is over you know your season is over so you can just take a little bit of a break a breather from things and you don't have to like you know unfortunately bug rebecca well she loves it but you know you have to you have to be like hey rebecca are you are you busy are you not busy are you you know and she's only not busy on the weekends so you only have like sundays or something to work with her but unlike most of my things because i kind of wait until the last minute to see what i decide for most of my shows i've already got the the last four episodes picked out and boy nice. are they they're doozies <laughs> you know i i have the next I, indie film cafe and i have a list of hollywood knockbusters um i have a, a whole bunch of people asking to be on indie corner radio uh however we're only going to do we're only going to do 20 20 shows and unfortunately a lot of the guys were guys that asked and i'm trying to do guy girl guy girl guy girl that way it's not just all dudes or it's not in a row well, or whatever. Maybe we could use some of the other folks for Indie Spotlight. Maybe. Or something else too. Um, mm-hmm. We could bring them in for one of the shows or something, see if they want to review films with us. I mean, I don't mind if, especially if, if they're okay with us talking about their, what they're doing after, you know, like we ask them what they're up to and they can plug their shit. So I'm okay with that. So anyway, 
Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think. I think right now that's it for me. Like, there's not... Oh, there's still Hollywood Boulevard podcast. There's still... Um, that should be going up on Friday because we're still recording blue tomorrow. Cheese. We're still doing still that. Blue cheese. Um, that's just started, so that's about two episodes. So I'm just gonna have to. I think I I, I still think I need to up, upload that. I'm gonna upload that tonight, so it'll be up. Uh, probably it'll be up before the end of the month. You know, end of the month on on Saturday. So as long as it's up by Friday, it's good. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's a busy, busy year for us, you know, period. I mean, so much content, but like, I, I was sort of an idiot in a way of like going, oh man, I've got all this time. I can start doing all these podcasts and just getting them done and putting them up and everything. And the problem right now that I'm running into is I'm just too fucking tired and I've got, I've got way too much other. I want to also have a life a little bit. I want to like hang out with people, do stuff, you know, right, that's right. outside of this. Uh, you know, I don't like, I don't mind going to see you and hang out with you, do the podcast and stuff with you or watch movies with you. But I would rather also like to just relax and hang out with people. Go. It would be nice to have a weekend and just kind of vanish, go someplace for a couple days and just not worry about anything. Yeah. I mean, that would be nice. Beach or Cape Charles or somewhere. Yep. So we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, you know, but we have got so much going on. Um, Sick Flick Productions is updating their website on uh, basically on May 3rd. The whole website will be up, updated uh, with new stuff. Um, I haven't done it yet before, but that was because we have, we have big plans for Psychotica. So we want to start really getting things going with that and kind of introducing the world into psychotica. So anyway, that's, we've been jibber jabbering for almost an hour and a half and time you guys, for us to wrap it up and go. Yeah. So I think that's it uh, for updates. There's not really much else going on. Um, if you guys have any questions or you guys want to know what's going on, check out sickflickproductions.com. Check out indiefilmcafe.reviews, uh, indiefilmcafe.poppy.com. And in, uh, if you want to throw us a buck and help us out, uh, our Patreon is patreon.com backslash Indie Film Cafe. And you get so, to help pay for uh, all this stuff that we're doing, all this content. And you'll get a Patreon only video or podcast where, you know, and we're going to, I'm going to upload that one in the next day or so. So you'll get a brand new one. Spanking one, spanking one. It'll probably be the end of the month. And I think that's what we're going to end up doing now is instead of the beginning of the month, Get them at the end of the month. And so that way you got, you know, you waited till you, the whole dollar is done. So for the month, so you can check it out. And uh, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I think that's it. You don't have anything else, right? That's it. Push the button, Frank. All right. Well, bye guys. Hope you guys enjoy this little update in the hall. Peace. Bye.